Welcome to the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Start off by saying good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, before we before we get started, um, last last week I, I, I said something in my lesson about uh, for those of us who are Christians, um, if if we if we truly understood what what Christ has done for us, that uh, it wouldn't be no problem with us doing certain things. You know, nobody wouldn't have to call you, beg you to come to church. Mm -hmm. Nobody would Brother Jackson wouldn't have to do another lesson on giving. You know, all, all, all that stuff. You know. mm -hmm. um, and, and so the question came up as far as uh, our relationship with God, as far as Christians are concerned. Well, one thing that I want us to understand is that a relationship, it has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has, God is gonna always do his part. Mm -hmm. We got to do our part mm -hmm. in order to maintain that relationship. Mm -hmm. If we don't do our part, then we gonna come up short at the judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and so, I mean, you know, it, it, we, we can fool ourselves if we want to, but, but a relationship, if anybody has ever been in a relationship, you know a relationship has to be maintained. You know, it has to be nurtured, it has to be cared for, and all of that good stuff, you know. And so, let's, as we walk this Christian walk and live this Christian life, let's keep that in mind. You know, God, God, you know, just because we don't see him don't mean he's not there. <laughs> yeah, and so... Let's, let's do what we can to maintain the relation, our relationship with God. Now, on, on page number 20 of the lesson book, under where it says, uh, seed or seeds. Seed or seeds. The writer has here, he says, now, uh, Abraham had more descendants than Isaac. But the promise only applied to the descendants of Isaac, Jacob, etc. Not Ishmael. The latter was the son of the bondwoman, the former by Sarah and the promise of God. Esau, Jacob's brother, did not inherit the promise. In the right answer, see Romans 9. Um, but we all know we all know what happened with Esau and Jacob. Esau sold his birthright to him. Yeah, so he lost it. Um, number two says the promise was to Abraham and his seed. In other words, the promise was made to more than just Abraham himself. The covenant promise was uh, partially accomplished when, uh, number one, God made Israel a mighty nation. And number two, gave them the land of Canaan. But it was fulfilled or fully accomplished in Jesus' death on the cross for sin. God's promise to bless all nations through Abraham's seed is not a reference to the nation of Israel, except as a conduit for Christ. Paul's inspired interpretation clearly shows in Galatians 3:16 through 19 that the seed was Jesus. Genesis 12 and verse 3. Further, Paul asserts that the law of Moses was not a part of the original promise or covenant God made with Abraham. Jesus, the Messiah, was a part of that promise. However, the assertion of the law did not change the covenant and the keeping of the law was not a substitute for the blessing that was, uh, that was promised through Abraham's seed, Christ the Messiah. Uh, KJ, if you will, uh, Galatians chapter three and verse number 17. <clears throat> This I say that the covenant 
that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which is 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of not effect. All right, all right. Now, I'll be honest with you, um, as, I, as we closed out last week, I, I, I said, uh, I, I'm so happy that the Lord had uh, the prophets and the apostles to write down all this pertinent information that we need. You know, this past week I was listening to NPR and uh, these scientists, they came on and, you know, they was talking some interesting stuff, but I, 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 I like all that crazy stuff, you know, sharks and all, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but anyway, they got on the subject of, of uh, uh, how the earth got here. And they said that they found the origin spot for the planet, where, where, how, how it came into existence, how life came into existence on the earth. They found it in the origin uh, 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 spot. And they say that it's in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they say, they, say they, 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 they use these computer uh, 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 simulations to simulate how the Earth came into existence. And it started in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And they said this happened about 120 million years ago. My brother there said, who did the count? <laughs> yeah, but, but, but anyway, they, they, they went on and on and on. I'm so glad the reporter, he asked, he said, well, okay, well, how, how did we get to us? How did we get to man and the animals and all? They said, well, we haven't got that far yet. <laughs> Just a waste of time. Waste of time. Waste of time. And, and I'm so glad that, 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 that the, the prophets and, and, and Moses and, 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 and the apostles, we, we got this stuff written down so we'll know. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God. That's what the Bible said. Yeah. Yeah, he created it all. So I don't have to guess about it. I know. Yeah, and I'm so glad that he did. And, and, and in verse number 17 of Galatians chapter 3, now, it, 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 it's, it's, it's hard, it's extremely hard for my law-keeping friends to accept what Paul says here. Well, what is Paul saying? Well, Paul is saying that that law, it was given 430 years after the promise. In other words, that law was not even a part of the promise. No, 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 no. Uh, you see, that promise covenant, that promise covenant, it didn't have anything to do with that Old Testament law. Nothing. No, 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 no. And, and, and because God, the Father, ratified and confirmed this thing in his son, Jesus Christ, that Old Testament law, it cannot disannul, the Bible says. It cannot cancel out. It cannot make void that covenant of promise. No, 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 no. And, and so we, we, we have many people, we have many people today walking around here. And, and you know what they're concerned about? They're concerned about that Old Testament law. Yeah, yeah, they're concerned about it. But Paul, Paul here, he's letting us know uh, that what we really need to be concerned about is the promise. Yeah. Drop down to verse number 18 of Galatians chapter 3. It says here, For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more promise. But watch this. God gave it to Abraham by what? By promise. Yeah. Yeah, now, 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 now this, this inheritance here, for what I've been made to understand, uh, this inheritance is not talking about that land that God promised to give the children of Israel. No, 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 no. You see, in the right part of this thing, God, God fulfilled that promise a long, long time ago. Yeah, He fulfilled all those promises. Brother Jackson did maybe two or three lessons, lessons on that though. Yeah, he, he, they, they got that land. They got that, uh, that, that land that God had promised them long time ago. 
Yeah. Yeah, so that's not it. No, you see, the inheritance that Paul is talking about here, this is what God really had in mind when he said to Abraham that I'm going to bless you. Now I'm going to bless your seed and in your seed, the whole world is going to be blessed. Yeah, this is what God really had in mind. And, and do you not know that for many, many years, the people of God, they couldn't figure this thing out. No, they couldn't figure it out. You know why? Because it was a mystery. Yeah, it was a mystery. Yeah, and because they couldn't figure it out, you know what God had to do? He had to reveal it to them. Yeah, when the time was right, he revealed it to them. Uh, turn with me, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. <clears throat> Brother Walker, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, mm -hmm. that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth and it and in him and whom also we have uh, obtained an inheritance mm -hmm. being predestinated according to the purpose of, of him who worketh all things after the after the counsel of his own will. All right, all right. Thank you, Brother Walker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, this this inheritance that we're talking about. It, it is far, far more greater than just some land down here on this earth. Yeah, yeah, drop down to verse number 18 of Ephesians chapter 1. It says here, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is. It, it, it's far more greater than whatever we can uh, accomplish down here. Uh, uh, let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number, verse number 15. KJ Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. All right, all right. You see, this inheritance it is according to the promise. Yeah. Yeah, and the Old Testament law, it really has nothing to do with it. No, it has nothing to do with it. No, no, no. You know, I, I heard one fella, uh, he, he said that, you know, when, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for the real Jews, he said. Yeah, yeah the real Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, he said, and then when he comes, he, we're going to be in charge then. He said, we're going to be the slave masters, and they're going to be the slaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he said, he said, we're going we, we to be riding on horses and we're going to have crowns on our heads. Yeah. Yeah, and he went on, the Old Testament law this and the Old Testament law that and love. Uh, and it was so sad. It was so sad. Uh, because now in his mind, Christ is coming back to set up an earthly kingdom. Yeah, now that's what he believes. Yeah. Yeah, well, let me ask you something. If it was wrong for us to be slaves, what's going to make it right for us to... <laughs> yeah, like I told you, I said, I said uh, reverse racism is still racism. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so again, he thinks that Christ is coming back to set up an earthly kingdom. But now our inheritance, it's, it's not... It's not here, but he think it is. Yeah, but but now in in in, in First Peter, let's go over to First Peter. First Peter, 
chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And let's, let's look at verses 3 and 4. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Blessed bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Yeah, you see, now, 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 that's why I know that the inheritance is not some plot of dirt. Not on this earth. Yeah, at least I don't believe it is. And I don't believe it is because the Bible says that it is reserved in heaven. <laughs> and not only that, uh, but, but, but John, let's go to John 14. John 14. Uh, Brother James Thomas. John 14, verses 1 through verse number 3. John 14, verses 1 through 3. Yeah, there, there, there's no, 
Uh, this whole idea of, 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 of this of, of coming back and, and setting up this kingdom and and, 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 and and like I told you on last week, it, 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 and I talked to some people before, it, it just it, it blew my mind sometimes. Yeah. Like I said, you know, gentleman, he told me, he was like, no, 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 we in hell right now. For real? <laughs> yeah, this is hell. This is hell right now. Oh, man. You know, but, but this whole idea of Christ coming back and setting up an earthly kingdom because he failed to set it up the first time when he came, that's, that's, that's the doctrine of men. Yeah, you need to leave it alone. You need to leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Revelations, Revelations 22, 12. Revelations 22, 12, the Lord says, he says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward, my reward, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Yeah, you see, the Lord says that his reward is with him. And if it's with him, it can't be here on his earth. No, 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 no. And as Paul already pointed out, this inheritance, it is not of the law. Yet if it was of the law, Paul said, then it wouldn't be a part of the promise. No, because God gave the promise 430 years before. Yeah, yeah. Paul says that God gave it to Abraham by promise. Now let me ask you something. Where was that Old Testament law when Abraham was born? It didn't exist. <laughs> he didn't have it. <laughs> now that law of Moses came 430 years later. Yeah. yeah, and so for this reason, the true inheritance cannot be obtained through the law. Now, you see, the law wasn't designed for that. No, 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 no. The law was not designed to save, and so salvation cannot be reached by the keeping of that Old Testament law. It can't be reached. No, no, no. You see, the only way that salvation could, can be reached is by us obeying the law of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because of this, Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, in verse number 19, KJ Galatians 3, 19. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression to the chief, to the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. All right, all right. Now, Paul says here, he says, Wherefore then serveth the law? Now, now I want to share, share this with you uh, because uh, this is what I have encountered over the years concerning uh, this, 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 this particular scripture right here. Um, now, on one hand they say that wherefore serveth the law, they say that this means why are you trying to serve? the law. Now that's on one hand. Now on the other hand, they say that wherefore then serve the law. On the other hand, they say no, this statement means what was the purpose or reason for the law. Now, me personally, I like them both. <laughs> I like them both. But that's just me personally. But now, if I had to pick one, it would be the latter. Yeah. Yeah, it would be the latter. Wherefore, then serveth the law, it would be the latter. What was the purpose of the law? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Um, the reason why is it, and Paul, Paul really gives us the answer. Uh, he, he says here, he says, it was added. Now, now remember now, uh, 
that law, it, it was not a part of the promise. It was an addition, it was added. In other words, the law of Moses was given to the children of Israel because of their transgressions. It was because, as far as I can see, God did not want them to mess up the seed. Because that was who the promise was made to Abraham for. Yeah, and God didn't want them to mess this thing up. Yeah, now, now, again, as far as I can see, the law was given to protect the seed. Because, as we'll see, uh, the children of Israel, they were something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you remember what, at one point, they said, give us the king, we want to be like everybody else. <laughs> Well, you can't, you're the people of God. You can't be like everybody else. Yeah, 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 yeah but, but now God, God had to put up with one thing after another with them. Yeah, but now again, as far as I can see, this was the purpose of the law. Yeah, and, and the reason why I say this is because the law was just a temporary thing. It was just a temporary thing. Yeah, and, and I know it was only temporary. Because Paul, under the guidance of the Holy Ghost, he tells us here exactly how long the law was going to last. Yeah. Yeah, listen. To, he, he said that it was added till the seed come. Yeah, and I know this is true. I know this is true. Because now in Romans, in Romans chapter 10, wrote Paul, Romans chapter 10 and verse number 4. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 4. For Christ is the end of the law, the righteousness to everyone that believes. All right. Now, Christ is the end of the law. Now, again, in Galatians 3.19, it says that it was added. How long? Till the seed comes. Well now who is the seed? Yeah, who is the seed? Let's go, let's go back, let's go back to Galatians. Galatians 3. And let's go back up to verse number 16. Galatians 3, verse number 16. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He says, not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so we find here that Galatians 3, verses 16 through 19, is saying the same thing that Romans 10 and verse number 4 is saying. Yeah, the Roman letter, the Roman letter says that Christ is the E-N-D of the law. The Galatian letter says that the law is only going to last till the seed come. Yeah, in other words, when Christ get here and do his thing, we're not going to need that law. No, we're not going to need it. No, 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 no. And I, I know, I know this is hard. This is extremely hard for my law-keeping friends to, to accept. But now, according to the Bible, that law is gone. It's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know this is true. I know this is true. Uh, because now, in, in Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19. The Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now the Lord says here, Go teach all nations. Yeah. Yeah, well now, isn't, isn't that, isn't that what? God promised Abraham? Isn't that the promise that God gave Abraham? Yeah. Galatians 22, 18. I'm sorry, Genesis 22, 18. Genesis 22, and 
verse number 18. It says here, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Yeah, you see, th th this is why this is why I know. I know that the law is no longer in effect today. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it's gone because uh, it, it was only supposed to last till the seed come. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and because Christ is the seed, he has made the promise available to whosoever will. Because that was the promise that God gave to Abraham. Christ didn't say just go preach to the Jews only. He said go and preach to everybody. Yeah, go into all nations. Yeah, in all nations and all families of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of my law keeping friends, he says, no, 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 Kevin, you got that wrong. It's to the Jews only. Yeah, the Jews only. And I'm like, bro, did you not just hear what the Bible said? And because you see, some 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 people they just don't want it. You show it to them over and over again, they just don't want it. Yeah. Yeah, now now, now you say and, and your elders say the Jews. But the Bible says all nations and families of the earth. Yeah. yeah and, and by the way, when, when, when God, as far as I can see, when God gave that promise to Abraham. There was no such thing as a Jew. There was no children of Israel. <laughs> I mean, Brother Jackson, you know, uh, they, they, they did. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get people to accept this, though. Um, even though you can open the book and you can show them, it's hard to get them to accept it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know the Lord, the Lord confirmed this thing uh, in, in Mark 16, Mark chapter 16, in verse number 15. Mark 16, 15. Brother Jones got it. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To the Jews only. Every, to, to just the just the Israel <laughs> every, every creature. <laughs> that's everybody. And I to God be done. That's not what that means. What you mean? That's not what that means. <laughs> what you mean? That's not what that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to everybody. Yeah, not just to the Jews. Yeah, but again, many, many of my law keeping friends, they, they're so hung up, they're so hung up on what Moses said. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong, um, because I, I can understand to a certain extent. Yeah, because now, now Moses, Moses was a great, great mediator. Yeah, yeah, he was a great mediator. And uh, a mediator, from, from what I'm told, is and it's someone who's like a a, 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 a arbitrator or or, or, or a middleman or, or, or a go-between. Yeah, between two parties. And, and Moses was a, a great middleman between God and Israel. Yeah, and that's what most people fail to realize. Moses was a middleman between God and Israel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now Moses was not divine. No, he was we have a time, we'll, we'll pick up from this one next week. Yeah, yeah, Thank you for visiting the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Hope to see you again soon.